Hello guys welcome back to my channel and in this video we are again going to be doing the Gaussian integral but we are going to use a different method now we are going to use Leibniz rule unlike uh, my last video where I had used uh, the Laplace transform so let's get to it so the problem like uh, last time is calculating or finding a value for the Gaussian integral let's call it G which is defined as integral from 0 to infinity of e raised to negative x squared dx so as I stated before in this video we are going to be using the Leibniz rule or uh, otherwise known as the Feynman technique and uh, I would I would suggest not trying to use any u substitutions like we did last time initially because they are not going to help us so let's recall what the steps of uh, using Leibniz rule are well first we had to parameterize our integral such that our, our original problem is a special case of the of, of the parameterized generalized version so let's go ahead and, and parameterize uh, this g on a fresh page see you there now parameterizing the gaussian integral is something of a challenge because notice that parameterization was actually the the main the main reason for for you know cancelling out a denominator because if you remember the video of sin x over x using Leibniz rule we introduced the parameter parameterization e raised to negative t x such that when we differentiated with res, with respect to t the x came down and then it got cancelled with the denominator but since we don't have a denominator there is no such objective there is no such standard parameter parameterization approach that we can take in this case so well thinking about a parameterization for this integral might seem highly non-intuitive but I will try to provide you with, with some intuition uh, towards the later half of the video. So let's call the parameterized form i of t which is going to have a parameter t defined as the integral from 0 to infinity of e raised to negative t squared times x squared minus 1 divided by x squared minus 1 dx well it doesn't looking looking at this parameterization it's highly un, unintuitive but you you'll realize uh, in a in a few steps why why this parameterization is helpful first of all notice that when we are going to differentiate with respect to t this denominator this x squared minus 1 is going to get multiplied in the numerator and that will cancel out with the denominator so we are getting rid of this term basically so let's go ahead and do that let's differentiate both sides with respect to t so we have d over dt of this integral from 0 to infinity of e raised to negative t squared times x squared minus 1 divided by x squared minus 1 dx and now uh, using uh, the Leibniz rule of differentiating under the integral sign this becomes when it goes inside the integral the partial derivative with respect to t of this integrand e raised to negative t squared times x squared minus 1 divided by x squared minus 1 dx 
So I'll just bracket this. And we can call the derivative of i of t with respect to t as i prime of t. So there's only one argument for uh, i of t, so an ordinary derivative is enough. We don't need a partial derivative for that. So this on differentiation, you use the chain rule. You get e raised to negative t squared times x squared minus 1, exponential term as it is, divided by x squared minus 1 times uh, this is a quadratic sum term, so we have negative 2t times x squared minus 1 was a constant, so x squared minus 1 as it is, and a dx. Now the best part is the denominator is getting cancelled with this x squared minus 1 term. So i prime then becomes, well negative 2t is a constant with respect to x, right? There, is, there are no x terms in this t, so we can take this out of the integral, 2t times integral from 0 to infinity of e raised to negative t squared times x squared minus 1 dx. Now I would like to write i prime of t as negative 2t times, let's separate this argument out. So we have e raised to negative t squared times x squared and this negative negative will be a positive. Uh, t squared and a dx. Now by the rules of um, exponents, by the properties of exponents, you can split this into a product integral from 0 to infinity of e raised to negative t squared x squared times e raised to t squared dx and they are multiplied with each other. So now notice that e raised to t squared is uh, a constant with respect to x, even that can be taken outside the integral. We have negative 2t times e raised to t squared times integral from 0 to infinity of e raised to negative t squared times x squared dx. So now over here, I would like to make a quick substitution. So I let y squared equals this t squared x squared term in the exponent of this. So differentiating both sides of 2y dy is equal to 2x dx times this constant t squared. The 2's will cancel out. And from this we know that y is nothing but tx taking square root. So we have a tx times a dy being equal to x t squared times a dx, x's will cancel out, this t goes with that t, so dx just becomes dy over this remaining t. So according to the substitution, i prime of t will be negative 2 times e to, e to the t squared power times integral, now lower bound so when x is 0, t squared x squared is 0, so y, y will also be 0. And when x tends to infinity, y is equal to tx. So multiplying by a, by a finite number to, to an infinitely large number will still be an infinitely large number. So we obtain infinity as x tends to 0, y, uh, x tends to infinity, y will also tend to infinity. And we have e raised to negative y squared and our dx is dy over t. Now notice that this t and that t will cancel out nicely. So we finally obtain negative 2 times e to the t squared times integral from 0 to infinity of e raised to negative y squared dy. Now, and now notice that it doesn't matter what what uh, what variable this is. This could be y, this could be x, this could be w because of definite integration as long as uh, the integrand structure remains the same and the upper and lower bound remain the same you can change the variable as many times so you can write this as negative 2 e raised to t squared times integral from 0 to infinity of e raised to negative x squared I'm just changing x to y And remember that this is just our Gaussian integral, right? So this is negative 2 times e raised to t squared 
time gaussian integral what is this this is i prime of t now we have an expression for i prime of t i would like to now um integrate this with respect to t from some upper and lower bounds so now notice that i of t our original generalized parameterized integral was integral from 0 to infinity of e raised to negative t squared times x squared minus 1 over x squared minus 1 dx and now notice as uh, when you plug uh, t equals say 0 you obtain integral from 0 to infinity of when you do that you have e raised to 0th power which is 1 so just dx over x squared minus 1 and this the entire derivative of this can be found out easily um you can use integration by parts you can use trigonometric substitution you end up with half of the natural log of x minus 1 divided by x plus 1 but that is evaluated from uh, 0 to infinity so at infinity now we have to take the limit remember limit as x tends to infinity of half of natural log of x minus 1 divided by x plus 1 and a minus half of natural log of when you have a zero you have zero minus 1 divided by 0 plus 1 so natural log of negative 1 so now notice this becomes limit as x tends to infinity of half times the natural log now this can be written as dividing everything by x 1 minus 1 over x divided by 1 plus 1 over x minus the natural log of negative 1 half of natural log of negative 1 as x tends to infinity these 1 over x term will blow up to 0 so we have natural log of 1 over 1 natural log of 1 is 0 so this entire infinity term will go to 0 and we are left with negative half of the natural log of minus 1 but now you might ask why how, how does the, the natural log ha have a negative argument well that's because we we are taking the principal log we are extending into complex numbers that means we can write negative 1 as we have euler's formula e raised to i theta being equal to cosine theta plus i times sine of theta if you take theta as pi you have e raised to i pi cosine of pi is negative 1 sine of pi is 0 so you just have negative 1 which can be written as e raised to i pi making that substitution negative half times the natural log of e raised to i pi using some log properties we can bring the i pi down so negative i pi by 2 times the natural log of e natural log of e is 1 so we just have negative i pi over 2 as i of t when t equals 0 so this is one uh limit of integration that we have let's check for the other uh, limit of integration the other bound of integration so we tried uh, t equal 0 in our original expression now let's check for for what value of t this integrand is is going to 0 now notice that limit as t approaches infinity of i of t is well as t tends to infinity this e raised to negative t square term will decay to 0 right because it's a uh, this will is like a decaying graph so this will decay to 0 eventually so we'll have 0 over x squared minus 1 integrated so that's a 0 so we have our our two terms uh, our our upper and lower bounds of integration so our integration is going to go from 0 to infinity because we know each of the values of i of t at at those values so let's go ahead and uh, perform that integration from 0 to infinity of uh, i prime of t and also remember that we obtained our i prime of t to be negative 2 times e raised to t squared times the gaussian integral so as suggested before we have to integrate i prime of t 
with respect to t from 0 to infinity well, t is equal to infinity to uh, t equals 0 because when we do that by the fundamental theorem of calculus uh, finding the antiderivative of the derivative is you get the function itself so you have i of t but you have to evaluate that from t equals infinity to t equals 0 and remember that when t tends to infinity we had a 0 minus um, i of t when t was equal to 0 that was basically the the the, nat the imaginary term so that was negative i pi over 2 if you remember I just we just did that so that is i pi over 2 over here but we know the value of i prime of t right this is nothing but negative 2 times e raised to t squared times g and uh, we are going to integrate that from t equals 0 to t equals infinity with respect to t and we know because we calculated that by the fundamental theorem of calculus that is equal to i pi over 2 so, so, no, so now notice that this negative 2 and this g are constants yes even the Gaussian integral can, can be proved to, uh, con to converge over this interval so which means that it has a finite value uh, we can we can show that it converges even uh, before calculating its um, its exact value so we know mathematically that it converges so it ha must have a finite value which means that that value is a constant right that value will always be some number some constant so that can be taken out of this integral negative 2 times g and we have the integral from 0 to infinity it's always the limits of t e is to t squared dt now one one of the problems over here is that e raised to t squared is is going to diverge on on 0 to infinity because this is is an ever expanding graph this is a this graph increases exponentially so one way to make it converge is to you know have an e raised to negative variable squared term so that you know we can relate it to the gaussian integral somehow because because of the negative sign, the Gaussian integral is converging actually. So how can we introduce a negative? Well, we can multiply two negatives because multiplying two negatives, you get a, get a positive value. So we have negative one times negative one. Fine. So we have negative two G outside times the integral from zero to infinity. We have e raised to negative, but but this other negative one can uh, can we write this in a better way? Well, remember that i was square root of negative one, so i squared is negative one. So we can write negative one as i squared. So we have i squared times t squared dt, and that we can take i and the t under a common square. We have a negative 2g times integral from 0 to infinity of e raised to negative i t the whole thing squared dt and if you you know expand this square this i and take it outside you you have a negative times negative or positive basically we are not changing the meaning of our uh, initial expression and how do we integrate this now we know this is equal to i pi over 2 by the way and it makes sense because we introduced, we extended ourselves into a call with the complex plane. You know, when we took the natural log of negative one and we found out this i pi over two value. So it makes sense to extend ourselves into a complex plane even on the left hand side with this negative one equals i squared part. Now, to, in order to convert this into a form of a Gaussian integral, you have to perform another substitution. So let uh, w equals i t dw will be 
I dt. So dt is nothing but dw over i. You, you can multiply by i on both sides. So we have i over i squared, which is negative 1. So negative i dw. So let's make that substitution over here. We have i pi over 2 basically being equal to negative 2g times integral. Well, upper and lower bounds remain the same. You can check that out as t go as t is 0, w is i times 0 is 0, and uh, as t tends to infinity, i times infinity, uh, i times t is also tending to infinity. So upper and lower bounds are the same. We have e raised to negative w squared and dt is nothing but uh, negative i dw. So this negative and that negative are hopefully cancelling out. If 2g times integral from 0 to infinity of e raised to negative w squared and we have an i which is again a constant and dw. Well we can have any variables but you know we can we can write w as x squared again but Hopefully you realize that this is the Gaussian integral. So let's do that. Let's write this in terms of x. e raised to negative x squared dx integrated from 0 to infinity. So finally we have i pi over 2 being equal to i times i times 2g. And what is this again? This is again the Gaussian integral. So g times g. i's will cancel out. We finally have g times g is g squared equals pi over 4 therefore g should be square root of pi over 2 taking the square root on both sides so it's a beautiful result the pi again comes out of nowhere although we didn't have any trigonometric function and that's yet another way of doing the Gaussian integral. So just for formalities, we, we, we knew that the Gaussian integral g was integral from 0 to infinity of e raised to negative x squared dx and we calculated that using uh, Leibniz rule and, uh, and a weird non-standard parameterization. Uh, we calculated that to be square root of pi over 2 and I would like to remind you that e raised to negative x squared is symmetric about the y-axis. So whatever you have on the positive part from 0 to infinity, you have the same function repeat itself in the negative part from negative in, uh, infinity to 0. So g remains the same from negative infinity to 0 of e raised to negative x squared dx. So when you add both of these, so g plus g is 2g, we have added the integral from negative infinity to 0 of e raised to negative x squared dx plus integral from 0 to infinity of e raised to negative x squared dx that becomes by the linearity integral from negative infinity to infinity of e raised to negative x squared dx but that is just equal to 2g right so this just becomes a 2 times of the, the value of g so 2 times square root of pi over 2 so just a single square root of pi which is approximately 0 0.707 and this this result is very important that's what you call the Gaussian integral over uh, all the real x's basically from uh, negative infinity to infinity you cover all the real numbers all real x's you can also represent this as integral over all real numbers of e raised to negative x squared dx that's square root of pi by symmetry. So that's it for this video guys. I hope you uh, enjoyed my uh, uh, second approach uh, with respect to the Gaussian integral. If you have any doubts please uh, reach me in the comment section and I also do request integrals like I did um, two videos ago. And please like, share and subscribe to my channel. Recommend me to your friends. It will help me uh, grow as a creator. Uh, stay in, stay safe. Have a great day. Peace out.